Hi there. What we're going to do in this video is look at how to import data from a Kobo toolbox form into Power BI. Um, but actually in this form, we're going to be importing data where there's been a repeat question. So you have more than one data table downloaded from your Kobo toolbox server. And so you need to upload more than one table into Power BI. So I'm going to show you how to get that data into Power BI and how to make sure that your uh, data model looks correct as um, uh, to, in, in order to link those tables. So uh, let's get started. Um, so I'm in my Kobo toolbox form and I have a bunch of test questionnaires here, but one of the questionnaires I have with fake data, uh, so uh, there's no problem showing this to you here. So household member repeat. So what I've done is I've asked a question, how many household members do you have in your family? Uh, so they say maybe three, and then the form will repeat a set of questions three times. So what's your name? What's your age? What's your gender? What's your name? What's your age? What's your gender? Over and over, however many family members they have. So what I want to do is download that data. So I'll go to data, downloads, and I'll download it as an XLS. So I'm going to export that data. And we'll just create um, a data export here. I'll download it. and. I will open that up in Excel. Okay, it's opened up in Excel. I'll just click Enable Editing there. Uh, perfect. And um, yes, this so this is all just fake data here. Um, so down in the bottom, we see that there's a household member repeat and household members. So the household member repeat simply has a consent question and how many people in the household. And if they didn't give consent, um, then this will be asked. So I'm going to, uh, yeah. So then there's a bunch of other columns that are just metadata, which is totally fine. Um, we'll ignore those for now. And then household members. Uh, so based on what they said, so if they had seven people in their household, then household members um, will then collect seven times, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. And what I want you to just pay attention here is how these tables are linked. So in the household member repeat, in the main question, if we go all the way over here to the end, you'll see a couple of columns um, that are quite useful. So first of all, you have an index. So that index, just as the data comes in, it, it gives it a sequential number. So one, two, three, four, five, okay? So this was the first questionnaire that we captured. This was the second questionnaire that we captured. So it has index one, index two, etc. cetera. Uh, so those are unique numbers. Also, we have a unique identifier. So this is automatically generated for each form that you create. Uh, so for index one, it has this unique identifier, okay? So that's another way to uh, just uniquely identify this form. So when you go over into household members, under what's called the parent index, it will say one, 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 one. That means that the index of the parent table, so this is the parent table here, uh, wherever it says one, all these seven rows belong to index table or index form one, okay? And it will also show that this submission UUID has been repeated seven times. So 31B, 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 31B. Um, it also has the submission ID that's repeated. Okay, so th there's various ID numbers, but a uh, parent index will be very simple for you to look at. I always like to use the UUID because then I feel it's a little bit more complicated. Um, <laughs> so if they match, then definitely we've got a match. And then you can see that there's this index column. So that's exactly the same name. So underscore index. There's also an underscore index, except this is an index for the household members. So this one is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, sequential all down through the whole table. Okay. So that will give us actually the total number of household members that were entered. So we have 480 household members that were entered. Um, okay, so parent index or submission UUID are the two columns that I like uh, to link uh, back and forth. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to save this table first of all, so save as. So I'm just going to go and uh, save that right now in the appropriate table. 
or boulder, sorry. Great, so that's saved. I'm then going to go over into Power BI, okay? And, and when you open Power BI, it will bring up this uh, page. I'm just gonna get out of that. So I'm gonna show you um, how to import that more complicated, complicated um, data. So over here, I'm gonna click Get Data and click on the Excel option there. And we're going to go find that table that we just downloaded and say open. And it will actually then go and grab a little snapshot of that data so that we can import it. Now, the little navigator function that it brings up or pop-up that it brings up, eventually, <laughs> Um, we'll then show you that there are two tables. You see the household member repeat, that's your main form, and then household members as a secondary. So I'm gonna click on both of those. We wanna bring them both in. And I'm not gonna load it automatically. I'm actually gonna click on transform data. Okay, so when we click on transform data, then it gives us this option to really clean up the data before we import it into Power BI and into our data model. Okay, so it actually what it does is it brings up what's called the Power Query Editor. Okay, so what we see over on the left hand side is that we have household member repeat, that's the main form and household members as the secondary form. Um, and what we can do is just clean up the data a little bit. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rename these uh, tables first of all. So household member repeat, I'm going to say um, main household form, okay? And then for household members, I'm going to put all household members data. Okay, so you can just name those tables so that they make sense to you or that they make sense to anyone else who comes and uses your dashboard or sees your query, okay? So uh, make sure that you name those so that they make a lot of sense. And then in your uh, main household form, you can go through and just clean up the table um, columns. So is there anything that we need to say? Okay, so people in household. So actually I'm gonna rename that. The so number of people in household. Okay, um, uh, and then this one I'll call give consent. Okay, so I'm going to go through and rename. Uh, so uh, comments from household. Okay. Um, now it looks like these ones didn't really bring in data because of the fake data set, so I'm gonna remove those columns. Now, every time I do something, if you look over here in this little uh, box over here, it says applied steps, it's actually showing you every change I make. So um, I renamed some columns. So if you click this little down arrow up here, it says, uh, you renamed people in household to number of people in household. You renamed consent to give consent. You rename, and if you screw it up, you just click on the X button, and it will delete the step, and everything will go back to the way it was. So actually, now there you go. People in household is back. So the nice thing about this is. Um, that you can actually create steps that are changeable, deletable, um, and it keeps track of them. So if anyone or if you made a mistake and your data looks wonky, you can go back into this Power Query Editor and figure out what you actually did. So that's great. Uh, so comments from household. Okay, so I'm redoing those changes. Um, Validation status, I'm also going to remove that. So there's my index column, there's my submission time, there's my UUID and my ID number. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And what I'm going to do then is go over into my all household members data form. 
and we're going to do exactly the same thing. So we have, uh, instead of name, we're going to say household member name, and age will be household member age, and this will be household member gender, and then we've got another index column, there's our parent table, name, our parent index, submission ID, um, oops, and then boop, 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 boop. I'm going to delete this column. So it's now looking quite clean. So once you've cleaned up your data so that it looks pretty good, you're ready to work with it, all you have to do is click on close and apply. So we're going to click up here, close and apply. And then Power BI is going to work a little bit. So it takes that snapshot. It takes all of those applied steps. So all of those um, changes that you wanted to make to your data, it applies it and then it imports. So up to now, it hasn't imported your data into the data model. Uh, so it's just sitting there as kind of like a picture of what data might be imported. Um, and you can work with it in there. And then once you click close and apply, it actually imports it into Power BI. And over here on the right hand side, we can see that we've brought in those two tables. So all household members and the main household form. And if you click the little down arrow, you can see all of the columns that it's brought in for both of those tables. So that's great. Then what you want to do is go and check the data itself. Okay, has it brought in that data? So if we click on all household members over here on the right hand side, um, it will bring that up in the middle. Okay, and then you can see all of those columns there. And then if you click on the main household form, same thing, it will just show you all of those columns that have been brought in. Okay, so that looks good. Now we wanna check the data model. Okay, so that's this little picture. Now it's created this line between uh, these two tables because it thinks it's linked. Now, it's linked them incorrectly. Um, and actually a lot of the time when data is brought in or imported into Power BI, what I've found is it usually links them incorrectly. <laughs> so the first thing to do would be to just right click and delete, 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 delete. delete. Great. So what we want to do is we want to kind of put our big tables that filter on top and our main uh, kind of form down here. Okay, so we're going to put this table because this has all of our households. So this is kind of like a database of all of the people. And then those people belong, I can filter these households down here okay so what I'm going to do then so the parent index from that all household members actually matches up with the index column from our main household form so I just want to drag parent index right on top of index okay and that will create a link so if we go to properties right click and properties what we can see is that um, we have parent index here uh, to the index down here. And I did that incorrectly. So actually what we want to do oops, is put our main household form up here is what filters down here. Okay, so this is one to many. Okay, so we have several households and then these are all of our household member data. So index up here goes to parent index and you can see the little one here, which means there's only one of each index number. And down here you have a little star, which means there might be many of each parent index. Now I'm gonna delete that because there's a second way that you can link those two tables and that's using the UUID. So like I said before, I actually prefer using the UUID because I think there's less of a chance of it being uh, messed up or brought in incorrectly because it's more complicated. So if I drag UUID down onto submission UUID, you can see that there's one UUID to many submission UUIDs down here. 
and if you go to properties then you can see exactly the same thing that all household members data we've brought in the submission UUID column and we're comparing that to the main household form UUID column. Okay, and that means our data model is now correct. So then we can go back to our canvas. So you've got to correct that data model before you start um, looking at your data. And then you could make a, um, maybe a slicer. So a slicer would just be able to select your household numbers. So what we're gonna do is put in those ID numbers as the field. And we're going to make this a drop down. And when we drop that down, I don't want to use the ID, I want to use the um, index. So I'm going to delete the ID and we use the index. So when we drop that down, Ooh, we'll be able to select which household. Okay. okay, so that's my drop down. And then what I want it to do is maybe create another little table when I select that household. And in the table, in the main household table, I or the household member table, I want to show the name, gender, and age. Okay, and there we have name, age, and gender. Okay, so when we just make this a little bit bigger, um, if I just want to look at household number one, then it will just bring up the people in that household. Or just two, it will just bring up uh, the people in that household. The other thing you could do uh, would be then to also add like a pie chart, Oops. pie chart to maybe calculate your gender. Okay, so then if you're selecting any household, then that pie chart will also change. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I think that is um, a good example of how you bring in not just a simple table, but how you bring in tables that have repeats. So there are multiple tables, how you link those tables up in Power BI and how they can all work together in order to show um, visualizations, be able to select uh, different pieces of data and make your data a little bit more interactive. Uh, so if that was helpful, if you liked that, then give this a thumbs up and I am excited to see you in the future. Subscribe to the channel if, uh, if you are a humanitarian or development worker that typically works with beneficiary data in the form of mobile data collection and then wanting to visualize that using Excel or Power BI or QGIS. Um, this is what this channel is for and I hope to connect with you very soon through this medium. So I uh, hope to talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Yeah.